ahead and I'm going to talk about Mozilla Persona. Um, I'm going to talk specifically about how the uh, cryptographic protocol itself works. A lot of people may be familiar with this uh, login system, but they may not be familiar with how it works under the hood. So my assistants here are going to help demonstrate this. These actors are, in, to begin with, Francine, who is our user, and um, Fluffball, who runs an email service, fluffball.com, and Joan, who has a website, hatsbyjoan.com, where she sells hats like this. Now I'm going to throw out some terminology here. Our email provider is called our IDP, which stands for Identity Provider. So if I say IDP, I mean the cat who has the email service. And an RP is a relying party. And that's the person who's depending on the uh, protocol uh, for somebody to log in. OK, so the plot of our little drama here is that Francine wants to log into Hats by Joan as Francine at Fluffball.com. If she can convince Joan of her identity, Joan will let her buy this hat. So to begin with, Francine wants to log in as Francine at Fluffball.com. So she has to prove that she owns that email address. So she goes over to her email provider, her IDP, Fluffball, Fluffball.com. The IDP asks Francine to authenticate, to prove that she is who she says. Typically, an email provider will do this with a password, but it's really up to the IDP. It could be two-factor auth, it could be biometrics, it could be the ability to sing a certain song on pitch, it doesn't matter, it could be anything. Well, whatever it is, Francine succeeded, and uh, Fluffball <coughs> says, great, I believe who you are. Now, I'd like you to generate a cryptographic key pair. And being stuffed animals, they're excellent at thinking of large prime numbers on the fly, and so Francine thinks of a public key and a private key, and she hands the public key over to her IDP. Okay, so now um, Fluffball takes this uh, public key and she makes something called a JWT, a JSON web token, which is just a fancy word for like sort of blob of some data. And she puts the following things on it. She puts the address, Francine at Fluffball.com, and she puts the um, public key that Francine just gave her. That's the key she just generated. And finally, she puts an expiration date on there. And it'll be sometime in the future, maybe two, four weeks. And she signs it lovingly with her own private key. So this is now a certificate that Francine has this public key. And it's signed by her email provider. So Francine can't, for uh, Francine can't forge this. She can't change the contents of this because anyone who retrieves the public key of the email provider will be able to see whether or not this is a good certificate. So far so good. So Francine takes her certificate and she puts it in an envelope and she stores it in her browser as a certificate of identity that she can use at any time to prove that she has an email account with fluffball.com. Next to this she's going to store the private key that she generated uh, at the same time. But she's going to keep that to herself. She never shares her private key with anybody. So now, Francine turns back to Joan and says, in order to log in, I'm going to make my own JWT. I'm going to make my own little pile of data here. And I'm going to say that uh, I specify there's an audience that I want to log, in to log into, that's by Joan. And this is an assertion of my identity that'll only last, say, two minutes. I only need it for a quick login. And then she signs it with her private key that she just made. Now, nobody else can fake this, because this is a private key that she has. Other people who have her public key could verify this. So she puts this in her envelope. This is her assertion of identity. Now she takes these two things, clips them together with a bag clip, and hands them to Joan, and says, here, Joan, I want to log into your website and here's how you know who I am. Okay, so what does Joan do with this? Well, first of all, it's sensitive cryptographic stuff, so she doesn't do anything with it on her web client. She sends it back down to her servers. That's where I live. And we open the envelopes on the server, and we see there are two things. There's an assertion of identity, and there's a certificate backing her identity. Well, the first thing we check is expiration date still good? Okay, great, check the obvious stuff. Now. Let's start with the certificate. This says, this person, Francine, uh, at Fluffball, has this public key. How do we know this is true? Well, Joni shouts over, 
to Fluffball and says, hey Fluffball, what's your public key? And Fluffball's like, yeah, here it is. And so Joni has it, and she can keep this key cached. She can, you know, maybe only has to ask for it once every month or so. But with that public key, she can decrypt uh, or, or verify the signature on this document and know that this has not been tampered with. So Francine at Fluffball.com has this public key. Great, so now what? Now, she opens the assertion of identity and says, let's see if that public key that I know is good will verify this signature. And if it does, lo and behold, we know that Francine at Fluffball.com wants to log into Hats by Joan and she is who she says she is. Now there's an interesting side note here about privacy for Francine, which is that <coughs> Joni and Fluffball don't know anything about what's going on. Fluffball can't track Francine's actions. She doesn't know where she's logging in. She only knows that she gave her a certificate to vouch for her identity. So there's no collusion between those two, and the privacy of Francine is ensured. So Joni says, I love your certificate. It's great. Come in and you can buy the hat. But she does, and she's very happy. So Persona made her happy. Hope it makes you happy too. Thanks. And now, just to help people out, hmm. what's the URL from Mozilla that people should go to if they want to find out more? Persona.org. And I noticed that you had some GitHub uh, code written. Um, for the purpose of uh, today's demonstration, if you go to GitHub.com and you go to my username, which is JEDP, J-E-D-P, there is a repo called Introducing Persona. And that contains all the code for the slides that I gave at DevCon 5 today.